Douglas. Thank you. Blues that you can use. Where'd you get that title from? That's, uh, I was just looking for it. When we did that record, I, we did every different kind of style of blues. And a lot of times I work with kids in, um, in schools and I would ask them to write their own blues songs. But when I first get there, I introduce the idea of blues and I'd ask them, what's the blues? And they said, oh, the blues is when things are down. Like the blues was when my dog died or whatever, you know, the kids would say. And I said, well, blues can be a good thing too. It can make you feel good also. So that was the idea here is that this blues is something you can actually use. Make you feel good, lift you up as opposed to always being a downer. Get the audience going here. Oh yeah. I wish they're on it. Rhythm's right on. This is the first time you can really see them. We've been hearing them, feeling them the whole time. Mm -hmm. I love the comping stuff you're doing on harmonica on this, Lee. It's like you're just, it's like creating a whole little horn section thing, laying in the pocket with it. Let's hear a little testifying from Brother Lee, Brother Lee on the harmonica. So you play a regular G harp for this or a C in the key of G? It's in key of G? Yeah. Probably used to G melody maker. Oh, okay. Oh, C harp. C harp, yeah. Cross. I'm going to go home and study how to play that. <laughs> Is that like circular breathing almost that you're doing? Sort of, I don't yeah. Know, yeah. My guitar horn section. Very nice. Oh, I love that note. Who are some of the people you listen to when you're learning to play this kind of style, Lee? First of all, I don't even think about style. It's, uh, that's for librarians and yeah. marketing people. Um, I grew up listening to all kinds of music on radio. Okay. Didn't know what you call it. And... Uh, I would say Ray, well, Ray Charles was the first record I ever owned, and that was when I, when I got Ray Eric Burden. Okay. And I bought my first record playing, and on my first record, that was Ray Charles. Big influence. And you're from? Denmark. Oh, Denmark. Yeah, okay. Brooklyn. Roland Kirk was a big influence. Okay. I don't have the right groove. I got to get in the mood. Copenhagen. Is that where Tivoli is? Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Beautiful place. The original Disneyland. Yeah, that's right. I heard that Walt Disney went there and kind of copped the idea oh, yeah, you can, yeah. from that. Yeah. <laughs> Got my hat groove going. Now you look like with that hat and glasses on. Who do I look like? You look like, uh, like the producer, uh, Terry Lewis. Oh, oh, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis yes, guys. Yeah. yeah, when they had that. Or is it you? Which one is the big one? Probably uh, oh, our guy, Jimmy Jam. Yeah, you yeah. look like Jimmy Jam. Yeah, he wears, that's right. He wears a hat, very similar to that, and glasses very similar. That's right. To those. those guys always did that thing. It's like Lee went and got his glasses to fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> Blues tambourine back there.
Yeah, the shirt's like totally soaked through now. <laughs> what was I thinking? You were thinking you're a Ben Vereen. Let me do yeah. a pose. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like I just did a dismount on the gymnastics or something. <laughs> it's a great look, though. It's working. Yeah. I remember I couldn't see a damn thing, though. <laughs> I was glad that I could play guitar with my eyes closed because I couldn't see anything. <laughs> Lucky I didn't really have to change sounds and stuff. I think I almost try to double take and see if I can fool you guys on one of these. Oh, there it is. No fooling you, though. I usually get fooled once <laughs> or twice. <laughs> There's the butterfly or the bumblebee. Little Hendrix. We were playing a gig yesterday. You played some Hendrix in the middle. Well, you, played a, you quoted a bit earlier. Oh, yeah. And then this guy on the break said, is he going to play any more Hendrix? And I said, well, you can ask him. He might do something in one of his solos. Yeah. But I never got a chance to convey the message. I thought it was cool. Yeah, yeah I stuck cool. it in there for him. Yeah. <laughs> Must be near the end, because I don't <laughs> play too much like that. I, I won't be able to play anymore. <laughs> that was a cool move there, Doug. Yeah. Across the stage on the beat. I love, I love what you're doing here, Lee. It's like comping on the harmonica. And he's got the moves that you can use. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing pretty good at being on the beat. Yeah. Northwest audiences are. They're on two and four too, that's nice. Yeah, on two and four even. <laughs> oh, this is the most lively I've seen Doug all day. I think he's gonna crack a sweat. <laughs> Uh-oh. Alright. A little Chuck Berry. <laughs> this is really the kitchen sink song, isn't it? <laughs> Everything gets thrown in. You left yourself open on that when you said a little Chuck Berry because I think he was pretty tall, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very little Chuck Berry. <laughs> I think we better get off of this tune soon. <laughs> we might have to pay publishing on that tune. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's as good as we've played that. I'm real happy with that. Yeah, I'm like, uh, okay, now I can see again. <laughs> Did you hear him play that little blue note at the end? He played the, the, the minor third? Yeah. It was, it was cool. cool. High note. Douglas Kenneth Barnett Jr. The full long moniker. <laughs> Nanda Trimus, Nanda Trimus. 
He has his real name is like Epinandis. Trimus, but he goes by Nanda. My name is Michael Powers. Is that a standing ovation or are they leaving? <laughs> <laughs> no, they like what they heard. 